How does loss of a man's heart contribute to sex addiction? Fantastic question. Super excited to uh, dive into this. But before we do that, guys, I'm going to read a review. And uh, you can always jump over to iTunes, to the Apple uh, podcast app and leave one. Helps people find this resource. But this is, uh, this is one of those. I've been listening to your podcast for almost a year. My spouse is an addict and I am betrayed. You have taught me so much about this disease, how to understand it better, show up different, or at least try and navigate my exposure while maintaining self-care. Thank you for publicly covering a difficult topic with such grace, dignity, and respect for all involved. There is so much more to say and so much more to learn. Keep going. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate that review. And all we want to do is just help. That's it. Help give hope. And today's going to be, uh, uh, I think, a really great boost for those who've dealt with uh, addiction and indulgence and um, and I think it will also be a really, really cool insight for those who are betrayed, be it man or yep. woman. All right. So let me introduce our guest today. Um, I, I recommend his, his books so often that I feel like I'm kind of introducing him all the time. Uh, this is the first time I've ever actually met him in person. But we have with us today John Eldridge, who is a best-selling author, a counselor, and a teacher um, he's the president of Ransomed Heart, a ministry devoted to helping people discover the heart of God, recover their own hearts in God's love, and learn to live in God's kingdom. John and his wife, Stacy, live near Colorado Springs, Colorado. And John is the, the author of many amazing books uh, like Wild at Heart, Fathered by God, Beautiful Outlaw, some of my favorite books. So, John, welcome to the show. It's really good to have you. Thank you, guys. Honor to be here. Great to meet you virtually. Yeah. yeah. Love what you're doing in the world. That's awesome. All right. So let's get right into it here. Um, so uh, the first question I have is, as, as you know, John, our platform is about betrayal, trauma, and sex addiction. So um, I spend my days treating sex addiction and I'm just wondering if you could connect the dots for us a little bit between the loss of a man's heart and how that leads to sex addiction and how that's correlated. All right. It's, um, it's like trying to hold your breath, uh, a loss of heart. You, I mean, you, you just, you end up like gasping. You can't, you can't live without breathing. You can't live without a heart. Your, your heart's made for love and beauty and adventure and, romance and and wildness and and when you shut all that down that it doesn't go away it goes underground yes and then it's going to come out in rage and and addiction and heartache and heartbreak and depression and anxiety i mean those are those are all just symptoms as you know brandon like the good news is it's never about sex that's so true <laughs> It's not. It, it, it's, it's about what happened to your heart. What's your story? What's your journey? And why is your heart going there now? Right? You know, I tell people to read Wild at Heart. And what, what I say to them is, this book isn't, is, it's not a, a sexual addiction recovery book. It's not. Um, but then I tell them, but it actually is, because it actually talks about the roots of what's actually going on with you. This is not about sex. It's not about sobriety, but it's about, about how you've lost your heart. And, um, and in, in, in the book, you talk about three things that, that a man's heart really, really needs, right? And could, could you just expound on that? Yeah, if you, watch, if you watch little boys play, if you look at the video games that young men love, if you just pick favorite movies from uh -huh. guys. You'll see Battle. Every guy wants to be in the battle, right? Yes. He, but he also needs to feel like he's winning the battle. Because if, like, if, he, if he feels like he's only getting creamed, that's <laughs> also the road to addiction. Uh, so battle and a sense of like strength and courage and I am the warrior, right? Right. Uh, and then second would be... What, John, John, when you say battle, like what, what are some examples of a battle? Like what, what, are, what do we battle against? 
oh gosh, every man, think of mission, put it in mission for a moment. Like okay. finishing grad school, starting a company, yes. chasing a dream, uh, right? Like starting a church, building a group of friends, finishing your house. Like, I mean, just a man, every day of a man's life, he faces a series of challenges that call him out. Yes. And, and, and he, we love it and we hate it. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the guy who's too comfortable sitting in the cubicle every day, bored with his life, um, not feeling like he's really contributing much to the world, um, but he's making enough money to just kind of, you know, feed himself. Um, he, he's not fighting a battle, right? He's, no, he's dying inside. Dying inside. Dying yeah. inside. And, and then again, that's where the cry for relief, for comfort. I just want to feel like a man. Mm -hmm. It's such a deep, deep longing in guys' souls. And if you're getting creamed or if you don't have a battle or, you know, you don't feel like a warrior or your warrior got crushed when you were a boy, uh, oh, man, like he... You know, because the thing about the thing about the you know porn and all, like the beauty, she makes you feel like a man. Yeah. You know, for a few minutes, right? You inside, you feel alive like a man. So, the battle piece so critical. And the reason I start there first in the book is, anything else you want in life, you're going to have to fight for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean. Yeah. Friendship, work, calling, mission, career, creativity, you know, like, like you name it. A vacation for heaven's sakes. Like, right. Everything that you want in this life, you have to fight for. And that's why the, the development, the recovery, the healing of the warrior heart in every man is so critical. When you say, you know, the, the beauty makes you feel like a man, yet we know that, that, uh, masculinity bestows masculinity that ultimately you don't you don't really feel your heart and and know who you are as a man through using the feminine um one thing you said and and i want to come back to this because i got we got like three questions going on but you said if your warrior got like hurt when you were young right i want to talk about that later but yeah. let's come back there, there's a battle to fight yeah. What else? What else, John? Adventure, <clears throat> an adventure yes. to live. Guys are wired for adventure. And again, you just watch little, it, watching little boys is such a fabulous exercise in recovering your own heart because the world hasn't gotten to them yet. And so you just watch what they love to do. And so we had, we have, we have, we have little grandchildren now, little three-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old girl, two-year-old boy uh, in my oldest son uh, in his family. They came over, we had put up a new playhouse. And so the little girl, you know, runs inside the playhouse to start, you know, doing her thing. And the little boy is two years old. He's trying to figure out how to get on top of the roof of the playhouse. <laughs> and that's all he wanted. That that's was awesome. like, that was the goal. That was joy, you know? And so we got him up there and then, you know, he just wants to stand on top and, and it's that it's like, it's risk, it's danger, but it's also, the reason we love adventure and, and adventure, you know, across the whole spectrum, it could be, you know, uh, just taking your first 50 mile bike ride, or it could be starting a company, you know, right. it, it, adventure could be uh, international travel, especially right, right now. Uh, <laughs> or, or adventure could be something like, you know, super epic, like climbing Denali. In a man's life, it looks very, very different in each man's life. Right. Um, but, but what adventure does is it calls you out. Like, can I handle this? It, like we come alive in it and, and it awakens things in us that most of our life in the cubicle world just doesn't touch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My son yesterday threw a bunch of mud all over the slide of our playhouse and was like going down the slide as fast as he could in the mud, like burying his face in the mud when you get to the bottom. And I was just watching him like, yeah, like this is great. There um, you go. <laughs> you know? um, but why, why do we lose that, John? I mean, uh, you know, a lot of men keep doing things. They keep mountain biking, getting out in the wilderness, but a lot of men lose it. They, you know, 
they just, they grow up and they, they think that that's not part of their life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's part of it, <clears throat> especially if their dad kind of sends the message of grow up, you know, stop being a boy. Mm. And you think that adventure doesn't, isn't meant to feed your soul, isn't meant to be a part of your life. But I think, I think from more guys, it is, um, it's fear mm. that um, some kind of fear gets in that takes away our heart's ability to enjoy it, enjoy adventure, desire it, like fear of, oh man, I just got to keep working um, or the whole thing's going to fall down, you know, or fear that I can't handle it anymore, fear that I'm not up to it. <clears throat> uh, fear is a real crippling thing. You talked you, about, you, oh, sorry, Kobe. I know I'm kind of, I'll give, no, you, the no, next, it, I'll it, give you the next one. I promise. Go, go, go. Um, you talked about your own personal experience, John, of, of really getting caught up in the corporate world and, and you were highly successful and, and at the same time, your heart was, was dying, right? You've been dying. through this. Yeah, yeah. dying. <clears throat> you know, it, it's a fatherless story. I was, uh, and we can get into this, but raised in an alcoholic home, pretty much emotionally abandoned by my father. And so I was just craving another man, older man, to kind of tell me, what do I do with my life? You know, who am I? Do you believe in me? And, and I found a guy who did. He was a great guy. Um, and he was one who suggested that I go to Washington, D.C. Uh, and it was a real miss because he didn't know my heart. He didn't, you know, he just didn't know what I was wired for. And I went, I was successful. I was well paid. I was climbing. And it was killing me inside because mm -hmm. I was living out of the false self. I was living out of the self that I had constructed uh, to try and please the world, I guess, try and secure myself. Uh, but it's the loss of heart. It wasn't, that was not what was in my heart. Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, the, the rescue story there goes like this. So I'm dying. I'm dying. And, and, I tell a friend one day and he's like, so tell me something. He says, when you go in a bookstore, do you like go to the politics section? Do you, is that the stuff you read, like policy? And I'm like, no, I hate that stuff. He says, what, what are you reading? And I said, oh, I always go, I'm so interested in the soul, like the mm. care of the soul, the spiritual life, the life of the heart. And he looked at me, he's like, dude, you are in the wrong job. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was sort of an epiphany. I needed somebody else to point that out. And I'm like, yeah, what the heck? And so that's when I left to go get a graduate degree and as a therapist and, and, you know, get into the life of the soul and the life of the heart. And, that's, and it was a awesome. total, I mean, it was a 180, man. I, I literally left Dodge. I left town. But, but, you ha but to do that, you had to face some fear. I mean, you, you had to let go of the security of everything. You, mm. went, on a, you on, went on an epic adventure when you got that epiphany and you had to face fear, right? Yep, yep. absolutely. The you, most change comes when the, the misery of staying where we are overrules the fear of taking the next step, yes. right? You just can't take it anymore. You're like, I, I got to try I got to go. I can't, I can't take this. It's interesting that you, that you go there, John, because I'm replaying in my head where I gave up adventure, where I gave up um, identity. I really give up. I really give up my heart. And I was playing junior college uh, football and only had one call from, uh, I, I think it was like division two school saying, Hey, do you want to come, you want to come play? And I, and I was engaged at that time. I was, I was 22. I didn't know up from down. All I knew as I was in love and I was going to get married. And I literally said to the, to the, to the recruiter, well, thank you, but I'm, I'm not going to play. I've got, I'm, I'm going to get married. So that's going to be my new, my, my new game moving forward. Mm. And I had this, I had this sense of um, this, this very real ingrained sense of duty um, that I needed to be a certain kind of, of, of husband. And with that came a certain type of, of worthiness. Like, like I, had to, I had to be a certain kind of husband in order to uh, be right. lovable, 
and in order to meet expectations. Right. And because of that, um, I, I, I turned down this opportunity to continue to play. And it's not about me playing football. It's, a, it's about me giving up my heart. Yep. Because guess what? One of the biggest loves that I have in life is football. <laughs> I love football. And I'm cringing at the idea of not <laughs> seeing an NFL season or a college football season uh, taking place in the fall. But, but, but the idea is, is I give up myself. And then, as you talked about, the misery, the, the misery that followed was just being blown by the wind. Yes. Right? It was blown right. by the wind, and, and it took this epic destruction of my life, of that which I loved the most, to help me to, 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 re, to, put, to put me on a path, really, like you said, to regain my heart. And it was, it w- it was the most painful the most challenging, I mean, it was really stretched in my bones, in my bones, in my soul on this journey. And, and yes. Brandon knows that journey. But um, it's led me to the very best place that I've ever been in as an individual and as a partner. And I'm still on this, I'm still on it, still trying to figure things out. But when you talk about giving up self, can you speak to what, what, what I mean, I'm, 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 I was raised in a, in a very, um, devout um, Christian home, and can you speak to duty? Can you speak to expectations as um, uh, an on ramp to this loss of self? Does, does that play a role, or am I off the mark? Oh no, <clears throat> it's a killer. It, it, um, what I want to do, I want to first point out to to the folks listening to your story, um, choosing the woman is not a big enough story. Mm-hmm. When, when we make the woman the story, we make getting married the story, like it's not a big enough story. No woman wants to be the story. She wants to be invited into a story. Yes. She doesn't want to be the story. And, and so not only did you give up something really key to your heart, you gave up both your battle and your adventure, yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah, you were the warrior you know, on the field. So you're giving up your warrior heart, you're giving up your adventure heart for a very small story, which is the woman. Yeah. And it, it doesn't work, right? It's not- it's Clearly not, it didn't. <laughs> well, and not just for you, for any man, but it, it's not a big enough place for your heart to live in. Um, there's a beautiful place, as we all know, you know, for the woman and for marriage and for a life of, of love together, there's a beautiful place for that, but it can't be the story. John, John, isn't, John that isn't that what uh, I'm getting some feedback guys. I don't know why, but isn't that kind of what pornography addiction is about is this consumption of, of, of the woman, the beauty to feel okay and to feel good enough. And I really like what you just said, a, a woman in her heart of hearts, in her femininity, she does not want to be your answer. She does not want to be your everything. Um, she wants a man. She wants somebody who understands their masculine heart and is already in that battle, is already adventurous, knows who he is. And so when she becomes everything, um, it, it's this, this thing where we're taught that your wife's supposed to be your everything. Oh, well, yeah, Zooks. Yeah, my, yeah. And that's, that's a big problem. And it's really not what they want. Yeah. Um, which leads us to the third thing, right? A beauty to rescue. Yeah. Right. Well, what does that mean? What's the difference between what we're talking about, John, and what it means to actually have a beauty to rescue? Well, there's a lot of ways to describe that. But when she looks at you and says, where are we going? Like, where are we going? What's what's our, you know, what's our adventure? What's our shared thing together? If you don't have an answer to that, then you made her the story. And yep. it's not big enough. She The rescue idea is... Yeah, pulling her out of her small story, helping her heal from her wounds, helping fight for her heart and, and, and for her wholeheartedness through a shared life together where you guys are about something big together. You know, you're, yes. you're going you're gonna to become artists. You're going to go make films. You're going to get in a Vita van and tour, you know, America, like all those romantic things. Well, it's because he is inviting her. The man is inviting his his love up into an adventure. He's not making her the adventure. And, yes. and so, what's the effect of that? I, I guess what what 
for everybody who is listening, who who is who has been in my shoes, right? The, the addict. I'm, I I I want them to really understand. We know what it looks like to make her the make her the adventure, right? And make her the story, as you said. But what's the effect when they can transition? And and what's the effect on the partner when you can bring them along? You have this, and you can say, "Let's go." What does that do for the woman? Oh my gosh, for a couple of things. First off, it takes immense pressure off of her because yeah. now she doesn't have to always be amazing, right? When you make her the story, she's got this incredible pressure on her of like, now I have to be the amazing wife, the amazing, you know, sexual partner, the amazing mom, the, you know, that's a lot of pressure. And yes. so when you invite her into something bigger, she's like, yes, it's not, the spotlight isn't always on me. But also, you got to know, like, it's super romantic. You want to you wanna romance a woman's heart, you invite her into something. Women love invitations. Mm -hmm. they, love it. they love getting invited into things. Hey, come join this group. Hey, let's take this trip. Hey, let's start this company together. Hey, you know, let's just go away for a weekend. Like, they love invitations. Uh, and so you're going you're gonna to bring a lot of romance into your healing marriage, the more that you're able to do some inviting into something bigger, rather than just keep it focused on how we doing, how we doing, how we doing, how we doing. Yeah. Or, or what, what I was saying, am I okay? Yeah. Am I okay? Are, are, are things okay? Am I good? And, and, and that was a really petrifying thing. So a follow-up question to that, John, because this is so beautiful. Like this, this is, this is so beautiful because I'm, I'm feeling what you're saying by, by re reliving back to, to those moments, right. To those, to those right. seasons in life. So the follow-up question to that is, is for the, for the, um, for the, the addict, the guy who is deeply struggling with worthiness to feel okay and uh, to, to say, and, and this is actually a question for both of you guys, uh, Brandon and John, but, but what would you say to the guy who's like, I don't feel worthy enough to even do that. Like, I don't feel worthy uh, enough. I don't feel uh, like I have a leg to stand on in effort to yeah. get invitation, right? right? Yeah, yeah, totally. What would you say uh, to that man? Because that's, that's like this huge roadblock. Yeah, it is. And that takes us back to the loss of heart piece. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> your first work is never the woman. Mm -hmm. Your first work is actually never your sexuality. Your, yep. your first work is, where did you lose heart? Yep. Where did your heart get crushed or wounded or, or beat up back in your, in your childhood? You know, as a boy, where did you lose heart? Be because the answers are back there. They're back there in your story. And, and, and it's the healing of your heart, the recovery of wholeheartedness that allows you to suddenly find, wait a second, I'm worthy. I, I, I'm okay. I'm not great, but I'm okay. I'm a good find, you know, uh, I'm a good date. Uh, and and, and also, awesome. it, well, it gives you the courage. It gives you the courage to begin to chase your dreams. And the girl wants to know, what are your dreams? Yeah. Again, it's wow. where are we headed? Where yeah. are we at? Yeah. Yeah. Cowboy, if I get in the saddle with you, where are we going? Right. But that's a good visual on that, right? Because when do you ever see <laughs> a cowboy movie, right? When do you ever see the woman get on first and then she's like, come on, let's go. <laughs> it's yeah. always like the guy's on the horse and he's going, hey, do you want to come with? Jump on and let's go. That's, that's a really so, great visual for me. So every sex addict that I've ever worked with has, in fact, every man that I've ever known has father wounds. Yep. Um, every, every man that I've ever known has father wounds. And, and, a, and a lot of the time I, I see men running from, from those, running from, from the pain of those wounds and, and, and turning into their false self, imposing. And, and, and what you just said is you, you got to go back into those. You got to go back into those wounds um, what, what does that mean? How, how do you go back into those wounds to heal those wounds? Well, first off, <clears throat> some compassion. Of course, you're running from those wounds. Because men, men, wounded men feel like, I, 
I'm wounded because I'm the wuss. I can't handle yeah. life. And, and so it's further shame. It's further- They perpetuate the wound. Yeah, it does. Yes. Right? Yeah, and then there were messages that came with those wounds and, and they feel so true because they were delivered with pain. And so you're making agreements with all those messages, right? I'll never be a man. I'll never be loved. I'll never, you know. Um, so, so mercy, compassion, of yes. course you're running from your wounds. Uh, but it doesn't work, you know, and all of us can say that. I can say that, you know, I grew up in an alcoholic home and um, pretty deep father wounds, pretty deep abandonment wounds. And I tried to just bury all that and suck it up. And, and it was a pretty huge day for me when I realized the doorway into my thing was anger. I was furious and, and I couldn't figure out why. And I would just get raging at like traffic stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and the idiot in the grocery store and, and, I'm like, whoa, where is this rage from? And then it took me into just this enormous reservoir of pain towards my dad and rage towards my dad. Yeah. Um, and the, the first step is, is to acknowledge, I have a wounded heart. I have a wounded heart. And, and those wounds have shaped me. And just to give it the dignity to say, wow, I, I'm not, I'm not, a failure. I'm not an idiot. I have a wounded heart. Yes. And, 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 and then Isaiah 61, right? Like, Father, take me into the healing of my heart. I, I, I want my whole heart back. Yes. It is a great way of saying it. I want to be a wholehearted man. And so I need to go back into my story with compassion and, and, and look at the places where the wounds came and, and do the work that, that needs to be done there. Yeah. And, and I do want to say like, this will be one of the bravest things you've ever done. Yes. Like, yes. well done guys. Like that's courage. That, that is phenomenal to step back into that because it feels like you'll never come back. It feels like you'll never get out of it. If I open that, you know, and it's not true. It's right. not true. It's, it, it's, it's going to surprise you, actually, how, how uh, available healing is. It, it's going to surprise you. But it, it, that first step, is it, it takes some serious courage. I, I, uh, I, I've heard a lot from my clients of, you know, I want God to, to love me, and yet, yet I don't feel God. And they give me all the reasons why they don't feel God. And then they tell me stories about their life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's God, and there's God, and there's God. Um, but uh, your, your book, Fathered by God, I think just the title of that book is, is really powerful. And um, you talk about this initiation process. So our, our dads are not God, and our dads have faults and flaws, and they will wound us. Um, when we look at God the same way we look at our dad, that's a problem. Um, but, but John, one question I, I've, I've wanted to ask you is to, to go through this initiation process. Um, like what, what does that mean and how do you do that? Yeah, it's a, it's a really important question because <clears throat> what we need to do is reframe what the masculine journey is. Um, it, it is a process of initiation from boyhood till till you go to be with god i mean it's an right. all, it's a lifelong journey of the development of strength and resiliency and wholeheartedness within you it's 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 developing the masculine soul and and it actually doesn't begin with the warrior it begins with love and affection the, the deepest need of the little boy is to know that his dad adores him, right? I mean, the baptism of Jesus, come on. He says, this is yeah. my beloved son. I adore you. I think you're wonderful. I love being with you. Jesus, you're awesome. Like, you just, you feel the benediction. You feel the love. You feel the affection. Like, that's the core need. And, 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 and then to discover, oh, man, how did that get handled in my life? Did I know that my dad adored me? Did I? Uh, and, and to go back. But here's the hopeful piece is 
we're not just damaged goods. Um, we, there is a process of wholeheartedness that is available to every man because God doesn't just scrap the project. And well, by, the if, way, by the way, God isn't like plan B. I think a lot of guys think of it this <laughs> way. It's like, well, you know, there are some guys who got great dads and, you know, they took them to the ball game and, you know, taught them about money and taught them how to, you know, about girls and stuff. And they built cars together. And, you know, the rest of us schmucks, you know, since we didn't get that, we get God. Like, totally. <laughs> Got you know, shafted. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like plan B, you know, um, I'll, I'll be your father. And he go, whoa, whoa, wait a second. No, uh, Ephesians 1, long before he laid the foundations of the earth, he had you in mind to be his son. John, John I got to ask you with that. Um, what if I'm the guy who says, that's, that's BS. God, God, God has abandoned me. He's never showed up. Why was I put in this abusive, horrible, terrible situation as a kid? And now when I pray to God, I don't even feel God. So God doesn't show up for me. What would you say to that guy? <clears throat> you were born into a world at war. And until you deal with the fact that the whole freaking planet is involved in a full-scale war against the human heart, you won't understand why you have experienced the abandonment, the betrayal, the assault. Folks, that was not God. That had nothing to do with God. That was the evil in the world that absolutely hates your guts and is trying to kill you. Like you, you, you just have, you kind of have to wake up and smell the coffee. Like, yes, you know, we're, we're not making donuts here. It, this right. thing is Normandy that you, you were born into Afghanistan. You were born into Mogadishu. Like this is gnarly stuff. And, and, and yes, you were assaulted. Yes. Horrible things happened. Yes. You have an enemy and he hates your guts. And, and one of the most remarkable things that Jesus says is he says, look, I know your view of the Father is messed up. That's why I came. If you see me, you see the Father. And I'm going to give my life for you. Hmm. The first thing I'm going to do to break the power of evil is I'm, going to, I'm actually going to die. I'm going to die for you. You go, whoa, wait a second. Like, my dad never did that. I'm like, right. whoa, wait, what? You know, that... What you see in Jesus by way of compassion and kindness and, and strength and, and then unbelievable sacrifice on your behalf for you, as if you were the only person in the world, he still would have done it. That's the father. It, yeah. and, and it, it's, it, we can begin to heal our view of the father uh, um, through what we see in, in the person of Jesus and also by understanding we live in a world at war. The, yeah. You have an enemy. Right. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was a, it was a super important pro part of the process for me in, in all this to, um, and I don't think I really uh, faced it in the terms that you just described, that this is a war and what happened happened. And part of my uh, adventure to heal my, as you said, my wounded heart, not, not failed soul, but my wounded heart, was redefining how I viewed God and how um, I thought of him because I used to think of him as hell, fire, damnation, retribution, punishment, anything that I thought that uh, if I, if I did something wrong in some capacity, in some way that, okay, here, here it is. It's coming here. Here come the frogs, right? Yep. Here, here comes the punishment. And that's just not at all. My own dad wasn't like that, but, but um I had to, I had to re, uh, I guess, retool my thought process. And that was so important for me. And by doing that, I really believe that that facilitated my uh, forgiveness of self. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The power of forgiveness. I mean, at some point, you have to come to the place where you forgive the people who hurt you. And it, it may have been dad, it may have been an uncle, it may have been a coach, you know, but you have got to forgive the men in your life who have done you harm so that your heart can heal. But also, it, it's going to free you up. It, it actually helps you 
see God more clearly because you're not hanging on to the anger, the resentment, the, the, this, you know, the sense of victim. Uh, when you forgive, it, it really opens the door to a whole new way of looking at yourself, as, as, as you said, uh, Kobe, and, and forgiving yourself as well, right? That's a huge, that, was a, that was the biggest, that was the biggest moment of change for me. And I know that God facilitated that. He, he was waiting yeah. on me. He was waiting on me. It was always there. Yeah. And I had to get to that point where I accepted that. Um, there, geez, there's so much that we've just tapped, tapped the surface on. I know that we're, uh, we're short on time. So we can't be done already with John. I, I know. Talk, talk with him for like hours and hours. It went like that. <laughs> I know. It really did. Uh, but, I, but I will say the, 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 one of the really important takeaways that I, that I will have from this episode is, is that I wasn't a lost soul. I had a wounded heart. And that opens a gate of, of healing of, Hey, so you're saying there's a chance versus the brokenness, right? That I would be, I would never be forgiven. There would never be a chance to, to, uh, to gain forgiveness. And, and I, and I hope that if you're listening to this right now and you are deeply struggling, I'm speaking directly to you who are the addict that, that you'll take away from this episode that, that the truth is, as John has described, your heart is wounded and you have, you may have wounded other hearts as well, but your heart has the capacity to heal. And, and you haven't gone on a road, done a road that you can't um, turn around on. It is possible to heal. So have hope that, uh, that it can be yours as well. So, so John, they find you at ransomedheart.com, is it? Oh, Wild at Heart. Just type in, oh, type nice. in Wild at Heart, John Eldridge, wildatheart.org. They'll find us. It's much easier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the most powerful things I've ever done is a Wild at Heart boot camp. Um, and, you know, to, to go to one, I think the lottery is like a mile long um, to get into them because they're so amazing and so good. But there's there's resources. Um, John has books. There's a lot of content online. I've watched a lot of videos. Yeah, that you've done. yeah we actually ended up putting the boot camp for free online. You can just Oh, I didn't know that. You can just get it and do it online for free. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Um, so John, I just want to thank you so much personally and professionally and just, just the influence that you've had on so many people and, and on me. And I really, really do appreciate all the work that you've done. Thank yep. you. Okay. Yeah. Great to talk to you guys. Yeah. Good to talk so to you. So appreciate it. So uh, guys, if, uh, if, if you've heard anything that you've liked, please share this episode because uh, together we have an opportunity to share the content that you've heard. And uh, that's a beautiful and remarkable thing. So thanks for joining us guys. All right. We'll see you.